no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. <laughs> Coloni, faithful servant of King Leonardo, was worried. The problem? King Leonardo had started walking in his sleep. For weeks now, King Leonardo had risen from his bed at precisely 11.05 each night. In a deep sleep, he had left the royal bedroom, walked down the royal stairs, and out into the night to promptly fall into the royal moat. Coming, sire! Coming! After dragging King Leonardo from the moat night after night, Odie Coloni had finally tried bolting the king's bedroom doors from the outside. But that night, King Leonardo had simply walked through the door. Down the royal stairs. And out into the night to promptly fall. Into the royal moat. Help! Coming, sire, coming. There seemed to be nothing which could be done to halt the king's nightly march to the moat. And Odie Coloni was worried. His worry would only have increased had he known what was happening at the hideout of Biggie and Itchy. My dog has fleas, and so do I. Jumping, G-Man, this is it. Someone finally put an ad in the paper for us. Listen. Wanted. Crooks. Nasty, miserable, sneaky crooks. That's, that's all right, Big. If it's me, to a T. So what are we waiting for? Let's head for the address in that ad. A short while later, Biggie and Itchy were entering a strange old house where they would meet a man who would greatly change their lives. The infamous Mr. Mad. <laughs> I am Mr. Mad. Did you come in answer to my advertisement? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We thought you might throw a little monkey business our way. Perhaps I can. You see, I am a collector. Yeah? Like, uh, what do you collect? Uh, stamps? Old bottle caps? Uh, bicycle spokes? People. I collect people. One of each type. Here, for example, is an accountant type. And here is an advertising type. Oh, let's throw it in the bathtub and see if it floats. Put it in the toaster and see if it pops. And put it on the ice and see if it's... I have every type in the world, except one. Yeah, one? One. One. I have no king. No king at all. Do you, by chance, know King Leonardo? <laughs> <laughs> we know King Leonardo. <laughs> we know. Silence. Answer my question. Okay, okay. Don't get mad, mad. Sure, we know Kingsley. We uh, bump into him uh, all the time. Perfect. You shall get him for my collection, and then I shall be able to study his behavior. I shall find out how he stands up under weighty problems. I shall see how he responds to great shock. But most importantly, I shall see how he stands up under endless pressure. Uh, that looks like great fun, Mad. But how do we get the king? We've been trying a long time now, see, and, uh... My brains will capture him. I have the perfect plan. 
What is this perfect plan of the strange Mr. Mad? Will it truly succeed? And how will it involve King Leonardo sleepwalking? We'll find out in our next exciting episode, Falling Asleep. Tennessee's greatest rival in the zoo was Jerboa Jump, who had as his helper Tiger Tornado. Small wonder then that Tennessee was very upset when Jerboa and Tiger began to be famous. Look at that, Chumley. Just look at that. A big car and a chauffeur. Why, they even got a butler to open the door for them. Uh, but gee, Tennessee, Tiger has turned out to be a famous boxer. Well, Chumley, we're going to be famous too. We are going into the boxing business. We'll knock Jeroboa and Tiger for a loop. Uh, yeah, Tennessee. But first, we gotta have a boxer. We've got one. Good. Who? You. Uh, me. Uh, gee, Tennessee, I can't fight. Don't be ridiculous, Chumley. Come on. Wow, wow. If it isn't Tennessee Tuxedo and his fat friend. If you guys are selling something, I don't want it. I got everything, see? Selling nothing. We've come to challenge Tiger to a fight with Chumley. You're kidding. We don't fight with chumps like Chumley. Tiger's a champ. Just as I thought. You're scared. And I'm going to tell everybody in the whole zoo. Scared? Listen, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Tiger will fight Chumley on the 25th. And I'll tell you what. If that fat walrus wins, I'll give you the car. The show for everything. Tiger will smash him. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, gee, Tennessee, I just remembered. I've got to go visit my cousin in Alaska. Come back here. I'm going to prove to you that you're a fighter. Let's go. Hurry, hurry, step right up, folks, and see the fun. What hundred dollars to anyone who can last three rounds with Philadelphia Phil, the 50-pound flash. He only weighs 50 pounds, and you weigh half a ton. You can take him easily. Uh, yeah, I'm going to knock on the noggin. Uh, I'll give him such a hit. boy, Chumley, go get him. Uh, I challenge. And so Chumley found himself in the ring with a 50-pound flash. He was all over Chumley like a mosquito. At the end of the first round, Chumley was tired. At the end of the second round, he was exhausted. And in the third round, he couldn't even get his guard up. And... Big tub of lard. The trouble with you is you're soft. But I'm going to fix that. You're going in training at Sullivan's gym. All right, Chubb. Uh, here's your schedule. Uh, first, you go to skip rope. Then work out of the flying rigs. Then the parallel bars. Then the weights. Uh, then the uh, fast workout with a punching bag. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, Tennessee, watch this. Faster. Hiya! Chumley! Look what he done to my floor! Yay! Uh, look, Tennessee, I'm Tarzan! Right to the wall! He's wrecking the joint! Chumley, watch what you're doing! We'll give him one more chance. Here, lift that over your head a couple of times. Uh, gee, this isn't so hard. <laughs> Chumley got changed for a quarter? <laughs> uh, quarter? Gee, I don't know, Tennessee. Let me see. Uh, not in that pocket. No, Chumley, I was only kidding. Uh, not in this pocket. I don't have a... Whoops. Oops. Oops. Listen, you walrus, you're wrecked by Jim. Now get over there and punch that dummy. Uh, who? Tennessee? Uh, I couldn't punch him. No, no, that big canvas bag over there. I hit it hard. Uh, gee, Tennessee, that wasn't so hard. That does it. That does it. If he doesn't wreck this gym, he'll wreck himself. Out. Out, out! Uh, well, I guess that's that. Uh, no, I'll never get in shape. Oh, yes, you will. Gerald Bowles not going to get the better of us. Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. Come on, we're going to see Mr. Wolfie. Well, now, you say Chumley isn't physically fit, eh? Well, that's too bad. It's very important to be in top shape. Looks like he doesn't get enough exercise. We tried exercise, but Chumley wrecked the gym and they threw us out. But you don't need a gymnasium to exercise in. For that matter, there's no one perfect form of exercise. 
Various kinds are needed for all-around development and health. Why, Chumley can exercise right at home. Good. How? Yes. Why, calisthenics. Yes. Sounds like some kind of medicine. <laughs> Why, no, Chumley. Calisthenics is a form of exercise. Some people call this setting up exercise. This type of exercise is good for those who can't get any other kind of daily exercise. How long do they take? Oh, about 15 minutes a day. In the morning before breakfast is a good time. Here, let me show you on the three-dimensional blackboard. This first one is a warm-up exercise called the stretch. See? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is called the twist, and it will help take some of those inches off Chumley's middle. One, and two, and three, and four. How many times should he do these, Mr. Whoopi? Well, just as in all other types of exercise, the amount needed depends upon your age and sex. Now, with you, Chumley, oh, start with uh, five each, and then work up to ten. Try this one. It's called a leg lift. Do it slowly. One up, two, three, four. It's a good idea to count out loud. This last one is a dandy. It takes a little effort, Chumley, but it will help get you in top condition. Watch. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You do these exercises every morning, eat well, get plenty of sleep, and you'll be in top condition in no time. I'll see that he does. And you exercise too, Tennessee. Everyone should exercise every day, even when you get older, if the exercise is mild and uh, preferably some kind of recreation. Actually, both group and individual sports to suit different ages make ideal exercise for everyone, from the hardest physical games to simply walking. Ah, uh, yes. Well, Mr. Whoopi, thanks a million for all your help. And Chumley followed Mr. Whoopi's exercises faithfully. And by the time the fight with Tiger rolled around, he was in top physical shape. Tiger, on the other hand, sure that Chumley was a pushover, had not trained at all. Will you stop eating? You got a fight to win. Well, it'll be a snap. When the bell rings, I'll turn into a tornado. I'll knock him into the middle of next week. Yeah, well, I gotta show Tennessee who's boss around here. So just in case, put these horseshoes into your gloves. All right, Chumley, you're in top shape. Stay in there with Tiger and we'll be famous. And the fight is out. Chumley moves out of his corner rather slowly. A Tiger tornado is like a tornado. He's all around Chumley landing blow after blow. A right, a left, on the right. It's a terrific barrage. But Chumley seems to be taking it easily. And so he was. All the training and exercise he did was paying off. Not only did Tiger fail to knock him out in the first round, but also he didn't in the second, nor the third, until... Here is the fourth round, and the amazing Chumley looks fresh as a daisy, while Tiger Tornado looks exhausted. In fact, he's so tired he can hardly get his guard up, and wow! <laughs> Tennessee. I always thought there was something funny about this car. Well, at least we'll get plenty of exercise. The mighty hunter had not had a case for weeks, and his office rent had not been paid. <laughs> you have not paid your rent, Hunter, and I've come to throw you out of my office. Oh, my Lord Pinchpenny, you would not dare to touch me, for I am the Hunter. <laughs> And I really hit bottom. And while the broken hunter trudged wearily homeward, farmers' bean crops were being spared. String beans, lima beans. And as the workers yelled for someone to capture the big bean bandit, Officer Flynn Flanagan was calling on the hunter. I'm sorry. The number you are calling has been disconnected. The hunter is out of business. <laughs> 
Out of business? Ah, uh, there must be some mistake. But no. At that very moment, the hunter was telling his nephew horrors. I declare, son, we're down to our last dollar. Now you take it to the grocery store and buy some food, son. And be careful. That food has to last a long spell. Well, don't worry, Unc. You can count on me. I always use cents when I buy. <laughs> but moments later, as Horrors was on his way to the store... Here you are, folks. Fox's Mobile Beanstalk Beanery. You there, Jack. How about a beanstalk? One jar of these magic beans, and you're in. My name's Horace, and, and, and what do I want with a beanstalk? Don't you read, Jack? This beanstalk grows up to the clouds. You hop up and grab the giant's goose that lays golden eggs, and you make a fortune. A fortune? Well, now, how much does a jar of these magic beans cost? One dollar, Jack. Thank you. Beans. Oh, you bought beans with our last dollar, boy. But they're magic beans, Unc. You plant them, and they grow a great big bean stalk, and... Enough of that, son. You come on along with me. Ah, you look here, you bean brain. What in the cotton blooming world do you mean by selling this sprout beans? Uh-oh, the nutty hunter. If I don't convince him the beans are magic, he'll ruin my whole racket. <laughs> Take it easy, Jack. These beans are guaranteed. You get a beanstalk or we cheerfully refund your money. Don't you want golden eggs? Riches? Guaranteed, you say. Well, all right, son, I'll give them a try. But if there's no beanstalk tomorrow, you're going to get beans, son. Beaned! Quickly, the hunter and horrors returned home to plant their beans. Nighttime came, and while others slept... The wily fox arrived at the hunter's house with his mobile beanstalk beanery. Now then, a few telephone poles nailed together. A little green paint. A hole for the pole. The pole in the hole. And that's it. And so the next morning... Well, now, I never would. Look at that. A beanstalk for sure. Well, Jack, are you satisfied now? Oh, you're an honest man, son. You'll hear no more complaints from me. Good. Well, that settles that. Now I'll just get back to business. All right, you giant. Fee, fi, fo, fum, and all that fonder all. I'm coming up to... <coughs> yeah! Ah, uh, Hunter, so you've done it after all. The fox and the stolen beans. Ha! <laughs> sure, you'll get a big reward. Oh, uh, how did you ever do it? Well, it was easy, son. I just used my old bean. episode, Odie Colony was worried about King Leonardo, for the king had begun walking in his sleep. Help! Help! Coming, sire! Coming! Meanwhile, Biggie Rat and Itchy Brother were meeting the infamous Mr. Mad. <laughs> I am a collector. Yeah, like, uh, what is it you collect? People. Mr. Mad explained that for his diabolical study of behavior, he had collected all types of people except one, a king. And he insisted that Biggie and Itchy capture King Leonardo. What's in a deal for us, Mad? One bungo buck per day, plus expenses. And if you fail to bring me the king... Yeah? What happens if we fail? Then I shall put you in... The room. Look, gentlemen. Look into the room. No! Uh, okay. Why convinced? Late that night, Biggie and Itchy began putting Mr. Mad's mad scheme into action. At precisely 10.50, Itchy Brother swam quietly across the moat surrounding the palace. Next, Itchy went to a palace window and slipped quietly inside. 
Once in the room, Itchy found the proper lever and let down the drawbridge carefully. At 11.03, Biggie Rat drove a truck across the drawbridge and parked beneath the king's window. At 11.05, King Leonardo began his nightly sleepwalking. But tonight, Itchy Brother turned the king so that he faced the open window. And good King Leonardo promptly walked out into space. He landed in the back of Biggie's truck. And minutes later, the two culprits were speeding away with the unconscious king. But unknown to Biggie and Itchy, a thread from King Leonardo's robe had caught on a nail. And the robe was unraveling to leave a trail of thread behind. At last. At last I have a king. What's the meaning of this? Confound it, who are you? I am Mr. Mad. I am introducing you to my collection. Collection? What do you collect? <laughs> I'm a stamp man myself. I collect people to study. How do they stand up under weighty problems? <laughs> And how do they react to severe shock? And now, now for the real test. How will a king stand up under endless pressure? Well, it looked like the breaking point for King Leonardo. But back at the palace, Odie Coloni had discovered the king's disappearance. And then the thread from the king's royal night robe. Guards, come with me quickly. Meanwhile, at the Mad Mr. Mads, we are ready for the supreme test. Stop! This is the most unheard of thing I've ever heard of! Silence! The test begins. Capture the intruders! But Mr. Mad had not reckoned with the swift thinking of Odie Coloni. Take this, you villains! The guards tied up the criminals, all but the infamous Mr. Mad, who disappeared as if by magic. <laughs> What new plot will Mr. Mad plot to collect King Leonardo? Don't miss the next exciting episode of The King and Odie. Oh.